Um, injury wise, there's, there's a couple of guys that'll be um, on the report. We'll see how the week goes. Um, nothing, uh, nothing of any of reporting necess- necessity, but we'll see what they look like as the week. We're just we're dealing with with the effects of playing, you know, eight weeks of football, and guys are fighting through some things. So some guys may miss practice. We'll rest a few guys. Uh, but that'll be that'll be a day to day thing, and just kind of how these guys work through the week. So nothing of of any consequence to announce necessarily. So I'll let you guys go ahead. Will we'll practice today? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll come out to practice today. We should we're gonna try to get a, a feel for where he's at after some rest. Uh, see how he feels throwing the ball. See how it looks. Um, the more important part for Will right now is gonna be not just today, but you know Thursday, Friday worth of days consecutively throwing to see how that how that goes. He feels good after the rest and some time uh, off of throwing, so we'll see what it looks like as, as the week goes along. Is the plan going to be similar to what it was heading into Buffalo where you really test him on those? Yeah, it'll be, yeah, it'll be a, you know, we'll make sure that if he's feeling, if he's feeling good and feeling up to it, then we'll, we'll ramp it up um, and see where he's at. We'll test all the throws, make sure he can make them all, make sure he feels confident in it, and then uh, if he does, then, you know, we'll, we'll move forward, but uh, we'll see how the week goes along. What do you attribute um, Calvin's big day to uh, Sunday? What, what were some of the factors? And I guess was one of them the fact that, that Hop was no longer there? Um, hard, to, hard to say that that would have anything to do with it. You know, I, I think more importantly, um, you know, I thought Calvin did all the things that he was supposed to do uh, to get open. And then the ball was, was thrown, it was delivered on time, and, and really uh, putting the spots to him for him to go make plays on it, which was great. And um, he made the plays that came to him. Uh, finding more ways to use him, you know, for, for me, just more different ways we can move him into formation and routes we can put him on. Uh, we knew we were going to see a, a heavy dose of man coverage against Detroit. That's kind of who they are. Um, they're good at it. And so we felt like we could manufacture a matchup or two, you know, move Calvin inside some and uh, got him on, on branch and, and on uh, their nickel 21. So just, just some things that, that we have did maybe a little bit different for him to get him the ball. Uh, but you know that's hopefully what the what the standard is for him. Calvin said that some he, of the things uh, said that I think some of the things that he was doing Sunday maybe he wasn't doing as much of before. Can, can you? Um, I think because of the style of defense we were going to play, it put him in some spots where we knew we could get him some one on one matchups, um, and he went out and won those. Um, it was kind of it felt a little bit similar to how the the Jets game was for him. Just a chance to go win, uh, and he did a really good job using his speed, uh, using his ability to come out of the, out of the break. Uh, all those things were really good to see, and just it just felt like he was out there playing free too, which was good. He said that he did some things differently throughout the week, and then even watching pregame, like with the tennis mm-hmm. balls, the over the shoulder stuff. Is that something that he came to you and said he was going to do, or like how did that? Yeah, he he actually last week had. You know, as, as you go, players go through, just like all of us, you know, you go through a, 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 a slump or a struggle and, and, you know, you look at yourself and you figure out what, what can I do differently? You know, how, how can I get myself through this? Um, and he, we just got a new uh, tennis ball machine that came in last week on top of it. So, uh, you know, he's out there in a walkthrough catching tennis balls. He's at before practice, after practice. Um, the, the thing that was the most impressive and I actually showed it to our team, just as a guy trying to, you know, doing what he can do to make himself better and help our team. And, uh, you know, I think Tuesday morning, uh, all of a sudden it's about 7 o'clock, and, uh, and I hear the jugs machine running outside my office. And, and I look out, and Calvin's out there with his helmet on and one of the equipment guys, and then they're firing jugs. And he went and caught probably 200-some balls, I would imagine. Um, but just, you know, not, doing, not playing the way he wanted to and decided to do something that would either change that or help that. And uh, I commend him for, you know, for – trying to find a way to, to, to get better. And that was really uh, good to see. But he's done a lot of things to refocus himself and get back to it. And I thought it paid off on Sunday. How much can seeing that hard work we put in lead to results? Like how much can that kind of roll over to the rest of the team and other guys see that? And say, yeah, I hope it does. That's, that's why I pointed it out to the team. I mean, I had a, I took a video of him in the morning catching the, the jugs and I made sure I showed it. Um, it's just as an example, and I wasn't trying to make anybody feel any type of way about it. Just said, here's a really good example of, of a guy that's, you know, trying to do everything he can to to improve. And you know, the point was like, whatever that is for you, whatever that is for your position, for whatever you need to improve on, um, what what can you do? What can you improve, and how can you improve it? And just challenge guys to go to go find something. And um, I just thought it was a really good example, you know, and and it and it paid off with it with a big game. 
General, how do you feel about some of the guys on the team getting outside help from outside the organization to change things over the course of the season? Um, as as far as like uh, like Consulting coaching, consult the coaching help sure. from out outside the organization. Yeah, I think there's a lot of guys that have people that they trust and lean on. Um, you know, just like I do, people that I I consult with and talk to. Um, uh, I think there's a place for that and then there's guys that people trust and there's advice that they trust and sometimes that outside perspective has a different view of of what's happening they see it from a different perspective because they're not in the day-to-day -day. and so i think there's a benefit to that a lot of guys have people that they they lean on and trust whether it be uh, their trainer trainers from other places in terms of um their how their bodies feel people they work with people they talk to i, I think that's all well and good i think most guys have something along those lines somewhere in their uh, I'm part of their team, so I would say it's pretty normal. Ryan, when it comes to the young quarterbacks in this league, we just saw a situation in Indy with Anthony Richardson being benched. Mm -hmm. You've been around the game for a while in quarterbacks. Do you feel like there is less patience, or does that kind of vary from organization to organization in terms of how they are setting up a quarterback for success? How long do you guys want to sit here? I was probably have a great long um, answer on that. No, there's, there's, a, I think there's a lot of things that go into that. There is, um, and I think before I speak on any of it, I think every situation is a little bit different, um, and every every player and organization has different ways they go about it. So I'm not speaking for anybody, um, but I just think there's a couple of factors at play for some of the things that happen in the league. I think one, uh, the quarterback position is the toughest position to play in sports. It's really difficult to play quarterback, um, and then it's even more difficult to play it at a at a level that um, everybody wants their quarterback to play at. The you know the top four or five guys in the league, everybody's searching for that. Um, it's really hard to do, and there's some of the factors I think are, you know, there's there's the economic factor of having a young quarterback on a rookie deal that allows for. Uh, financial flexibility, so you can build a better roster and not pay the quarterback what they're getting paid now, sixty million dollars plus now, um, as a part of the the whole picture of building a team. Um, you know, I think college football and and NFL football are, are so dramatically different uh, right now. There's very few like pro style offenses in college. Um, there's a lot of things about what those guys do in college that works really well in college, and then there's a whole different level when you get here. Uh, the biggest thing for me, like the protections, understanding protections, how to protect yourself, how to set protections, the pressures you see um, in the high leverage spots in games. So there's those are just some minor things, but there's there's also then now the the patience part, which as we all know, as I said the other day, there's not a lot of patience in pro sports in general, and um, sometimes it does take a little bit of time to learn all of those things. Um, and then you know there's 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 you're balancing winning with developing, and that's a very, very hard thing to do in, in pro football, um, probably in every professional sport, because uh, fans want success and ownerships want success, and all of those things are are all normal. They're part of it, um, but I think there's all, sometimes those things conflict and they and they run into each other, um, where you're trying to to win because people's jobs are on the line, um, and then you're trying to develop because guys need development. So it's. It's a really tricky thing, but I think it also stems mostly from the fact that it's just such a difficult position to play, um, and there's so much demand on that position that uh, you have to you have to play a good amount of football to learn all of those lessons. I think so. Um, I could talk about this for a really long time. I won't bore everybody, but there's there's a lot of things that I think go into it. Along those lines, with you bringing in your offensive system that you've had success with. Mm -hmm. And some teams, when they bring a young quarterback in, like when Lamar Jackson was a rookie in Baltimore and he had to play, they said, let's do what you do well, and then we'll mm -hmm. add to your play as you learn. Yeah. And how has that been in terms of you trying to marry what Will has done in the past and had success with to what you're trying to do here? Yeah, that's an ongoing, that's an ongoing process. You know, there's a, there's a tenets of offensive football that, that – I believe in there's part of a core of our, our system and there's core plays and core things that, that we adhere to that you know when things get hard we lean on those things because we know those are the things that we believe work um, there's also the other part of it where there's, you're trying to find things that the quarterbacks are comfortable with um, and I've learned more as, as the games have gone I learned more about that with Will and, and how he plays you don't know anything about 
anybody or any quarterback until you play football, um, until you're in the heat of it and it, and it matters. Um, even the preseason is not real football. You know, you don't really – it's not real. It's, um, it's hard to get a gauge. So as I've actually gone through games with Will, you start to see where uh, things that he likes and I take feedback. Same thing with Mason. Um, that's the best way to do it. That's the most uh, cohesive way to find what works for everybody is you still have to have something you believe in and a system you believe in. Um, but then how do you supplement that with what the quarterback feels comfortable with? And um, we have those conversations all the time, every day. Um, and I've learned, I've learned quite a bit about them over, over the course of, um, you know, the last couple of weeks. And I know it, feel, it feels like it's been 50 weeks, but it's, you know, it's, it's been six games, you know. Um, so that's where we're at. And we're continuing to build and, and learn about each other. Between winning and development, I know you can't speak for Shea Second or Dave Canales or any of those right. guys, but, but when you are considering that, what are the factors in your head that kind of determine which is more important in a given moment? Um, you know, we're 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 in a production business, you know, and that's that's the at some point you reach that that apex where right, we do have to win or 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 show that we're we're improving. All of those things are all a part of it. Um, and you really want to make sure that, you know, the rest of the team feels the same way too. You reach a certain point where if, you know, if, if, if it, they don't feel like that gives them the best chance to win, that's always the hardest part because you got a bunch of guys that put their bodies on the line every week too, or it means something to them and, and they don't take, uh, they don't, they, they want them held to the same standards. You know, if you're, if your position is not playing well, usually what happens? find somebody else um, and so sometimes that you get to a certain point where that also happens where you know guys are fighting and trying and, and fighting through injuries and playing hard um, and they just sometimes want to make sure that the rest of it's uh, in line with that too and so that's that's where it gets tricky uh, when you're when you're if you're not playing well and you're trying to develop and still win so uh, again these are these are like really deep philosophical conversations for uh, a Wednesday but those are all the things that that, that go into it as the record's gotten poorer, mm -hmm. there's, there's a noisy fan base segment that, that says lo lose away. They want the better draft capital. Sure. There's a small element of that fan base that says that's the plan. Uh, like, not only – they don't only want to see you lose to get it. They think that you're planning to lose sure. to get it. Uh, I understand. Your thoughts on those. I understand that the, you know, from the outside looking in, you know, that's easy to say when you don't have any uh, dog in a fight. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll say this: I've never been anywhere, and I've been on some teams that have lost games. Uh, we're at any point that that is part of our thought process. That's not for me to think about. If if people uh, out there want to think about it, or that's uh, an organizational, they're looking at different things. That's fine. That's their job. But our job is to go put the best product on the field every single week, play as hard as we can, do everything we can to win a game. And um, I'll always take that stance. That is always what I believe in for the same reason I just said. There's a bunch of guys uh, where this is this is their job and their livelihood, and it means something to them. And uh, they put themselves on the line. They put their bodies on the line. They fight through injuries. Uh, and at no point um, would that ever be something that anybody in a football coaching or, or, or locker room would uh, would, ever, would ever think about or try to do. That's not how, that's not how this works for us. Um, you know, there's too much at stake and too much at risk for anybody to do anything other than everything they possibly can to go win a game. Coming off the two straight uh, tough road game, road losses. I mean, how much are you looking forward to being back home this week and you know, can't wait performing in front of the majority of people that that'll be cheering? For yeah, that. can't wait. I mean, we we had to go place in two really really tough environments, and 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 truthfully, they were other great places to play. Um, if you're if you're not the visiting team, you know. Uh, but I also felt like what what a it was a glimpse of what I think that our place is capable of being. Now we got to be in the spot that those two teams are in, and we got to win games to make it that way. But um, just the the vision of what that's going to look like uh, when we when we get going and and having a real home field advantage uh, like those places do. And I'm excited to get back in front of our fans uh, and give them something to be excited about again. And that's something I think all our guys are looking forward to. And um, it's just nice to to be back at home. Those these these. Two game road swings feel like they're they're a month long sometimes. So uh, really looking forward to get back in, in front of our fans. That, when you look at the Patriots, do you see some similarities what they're doing there and what you kind of have going through here. Yeah, they're, they they they're they're a fighting they're a team that's you know proud organization too, and they're they're fighting uh, to try to make make some wins happen for themselves. And um, again, they they got 
they're tough. They're still they everything about them on their defense, their DNA is New England. You know, it looks looks and feels the same. Um, and then they've been physical running the football. So, you know, it's a team that that is also hungry. You know, they want they want wins too. They're fighting. They're fighting just like we are um, to put themselves in position. So, um, again, we don't the, the records are what they are. But you know, we got two teams that are that are desperate and fighting for some wins because you know we want to get that feeling of winning football games back. Offensive head coach, how do you view the gap in some of the numbers of productivity between the offense and the defense? And is it something you bring up to the guys at all? No, I think we know we, we got room for improvement really everywhere. Um, sometimes numbers are what they are. Uh, you, you can sometimes spin statistics a lot of different ways. Um, but our, our defense statistically is, is in a good place. Um, we've done a good job on defense in, in a lot of games, put our defense in some tough spots this past week. Um, certainly acknowledge that. There's no hiding from that. That's They, they got put in some tough spots. Um, and I think if you ask them, they probably didn't respond the way that they think they're capable of responding in those tough spots. Um, but yeah, there's there's a there's an element of of we got to do a lot of things better. Um, I think everybody on the on the team from special teams and offense and defense understands that um, there's no way in this league to do anything of any any value that if you're not doing it together. And uh, we know we all need each other. We all need each other to play better. Um, whether the, the stats or the numbers say one one is dramatically different than the other, um, it doesn't really matter. We have to find a way to complement whatever our strengths are and, and play into those and find a way um, to win a game. And our, our players uh, certainly buy into that process, and they know that without without standing together, without having each other's back, you know, it doesn't really mean much, and you're going to have a hard time winning games. So um, our guys are locked in, and even though we know we have improvements to make, um, places we have to play better, uh, I think our guys know that, that we can all help each other do it. Given the impatience of teams and fans, um, it, I think it's fair to wonder why anybody would ever maybe draft a player who has a ton of talent, but you know it's going to take a long time maybe for it to, to come to fruition. Is it a mark of a good franchise when they can – ignore the noise and hunker down and just embrace the suck in that way yeah i, I don't know about it nobody likes to embrace the suck uh, unfortunately but yeah i think there's i think when you look across the league and you look at the organizations that believe in uh that believe in in development that believe in continuity that do things um with without being overreact overly reactionary to to a, a negative dip a, a down game a down season um you know those are the those are the organizations you tend to see sort of sort of in the mix most of the time you know and um you can i don't need to point anybody out but i think you know there's a lot of places out there that uh, that are willing to weather um some negativity some impatience from from the outside world knowing that they believe in what they're doing and how they're doing it so um, those are those are things i think when you look around you see that there is some uh there is some correlation between those things when you when you have some patience and, and are willing to go through some development um at the end of the day Explain, oh, let me explain some of the special teams coverage problems with mm -hmm. you, you needed to change personnel with the getting kicks blocked in order and gave up something with coverage. Yep. W what's it say about the people that you have available for special teams roles that you kind of had to choose one or the other and don't have people that you can count on to both prevent blocks and cover? Well, there's there's things that go. They have to work together. You know, there as just like your your rush and your coverage on defense work together to create sacks and um, cover teams down the field and pressure the quarterback. Uh, the punt coverage is the same way. Is that you have to be able to protect and cover. Um, and then there's things about that process that uh, have to work together. So the hang time has to work with the coverage. The directional of the punt has to work with the coverage. Uh, the speed of the players and the technique of the players has to be executed well. Um, and then you have to make returners when you have chances to take a shot. You have to make the tackle. Um, and then there's the other part where you, your gunner's got to make a returner go sideways and not down right down the middle of the field. And so all that stuff works together. So I wouldn't say it was it's necessarily like we, we lack. We have enough to go be a good punt coverage unit. Um, and we have to do a better job of, of the fundamentals, the techniques, and then working together with the, the protection, the coverage, and the punt timing all have to work together um, to have better results than we had last week, certainly. So, um, again, we'll, we'll keep we'll, – we'll, everybody is going to have to have a hand in it, and we're going to have to have uh, contributions from a lot of guys. And um, that's always how special teams works. And you're never going to have, um, you know, four or five core Pro Bowl special teamers. I mean, we've got to have guys step up and, uh, and do those jobs at a, at a level that allows us to execute um, the way that we need to win. 
Do you have any idea of Sneed as to, as to his availability? Um, Sneed probably still week to week. Um, I don't anticipate him being out there uh, today. Uh, so we'll just kind of see it as the week goes, uh, progresses. I think he's hopefully getting closer. Uh, Taja should be should be uh, Taja should be good to go this week. Um, again, we'll see. We'll take it day to day on on what he feels like after some practices, but expect him uh, to have a good chance to play. Thanks, Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you.